So character is huge. Now to go along with that same idea, entrance. I again can't tell you how many times I've gone to a wrestling show and I've seen somebody come out and they got a kick-ass song and their entrance is the shit and you're like, oh, this is my new guy right here. This is it. This is absolutely it. And then the bell rings and you look and you go, oh, you went to wrestling school. Okay, that's nice. If you, okay, I got some quotes here. So uh, if you, imagine it like this. Someone in the crowd is, is, is set to connect with you on this particular night, but they were in the bathroom when you came out. They missed your entrance. And so they sat down right when the bell rings. Are they going to get who you are? Do they understand your character by how you're wrestling? Or do they just go, oh, those tights are cute. You can't just have it rely on your entrance. You should be you should be able to watch your match with the sound off and with no entrance and still get who you are. And if you can't, then you're not putting forth the effort. Now, again, that doesn't mean you got to be Rick Rude and you got to be like, wait, wait, before we lock up, I got to do the hip swiggle in the crowd and da-da-da, I got to cut a promo. No, 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 no. There was a time I uh, I was at an Evolve show and Chris Hero was there and I heard him talking to these wrestlers who were like these real rough and tumble kind of like backwoodsy guys and he was like, you guys are basically cavemen in overalls. You should be wrestling like that. You can't come out a certain way and you're barefoot and there's banjos playing and everyone signs on and then you're like, yeah, but watch this head. Yeah. Put that right in there like that and watch this picture-perfect suplex. Yeah. Super that doesn't fit at all. Squeeze. Now, it'll be safe, obviously. Don't be like, I'm breaking someone's neck tonight. But it should all fit together. Yeah. It should all come together. Your character should match your entrance. Your, ma- your entrance should match your wrestling. Your wrestling should match your promo. These should all be in harmony together. And if they're not, if they're like, well, my promo, I'm basically just Mario from Nintendo. But in the match, I'm Brock Lesnar. And in my entrance, I'm The Undertaker. That doesn't make any fucking sense. It'd be a sight to see. It would be. But for you'd be done. You'd be like, done halfway through. How do you through. get to that point where they like book you? Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. How would you book? Well, uh, well, we've got a spot for Brock Lesnar, but we don't have a spot for Undertaker <laughs> or Super Mario. So I don't know what we're going to do with you. They have to co exist you got to make them work in a certain fluidity and a certain unison like they you got to be on each level it has to be this it all has to connect you got to connect the dots to create this like the shape in the stars you know the stars have to align to make to make this all make sense to the paying audience to the customer the paying consumers you know the guys who buy the tickets to come see us um i think yeah mostly It just, it has to make sense. It has to be readable to those people. So in regards to an entrance, I want to talk about the opposite now. I'm not talking to the people who have like the big flashy entrance that everybody loves. I'm talking about the people who just come out and if you're a face, you come out and you go, come on. And then that's it. Or you come out to some random song. Am I cutting too close to home? Are you? <laughs> no, did you did you have did you have PTSD about a hundred thousand wrestlers that you yes. know? Um, <laughs> or you're coming out to some random song or something like that. Uh, John Davis once said that your entrance should be the trailer for the motion picture that is your match. And so, if you think about it in that context. If you've ever been to the movies and you've seen a trailer and the trailer sucks balls, then you're way less likely to go, oh, I'm buying a ticket to this movie. You'd be like, so did you grab popcorn or did you grab the nachos? Because I I suddenly, I got places I got to be. Yeah. On the other hand, if you've got an absolute incredible trailer... And then Roger Corman's making your movie and it sucks ass. Yeah. That's no good either. Cause now people are like, hey, I didn't get my money's worth on this. That trailer made a lot of promises that Man. this movie's not coming together on. That's how you should view your entrance. It is the trailer to the motion picture that you're being in. And so it's funny. Uh, now you would have obviously graduate of wrestling school, very successful. So, uh, <laughs> when it comes to, um, creating a character and being a wrestler. I've always been told by a lot of people that they prefer to be heels. They prefer to be villains. Yeah. Because it's easier, I guess. Way easier. Yeah. Okay. I disagree with that. Yes. It is way easy to be a face. And basically Mm -hmm. a lot of it comes with the entrance. And I'm not talking about you come out of the curtain and you go, come on, everybody, let's make some noise. That's not a character. What I'm talking about is music plays a huge part 
in an entrance. And I can't tell you how many times I've had wrestlers where I'm like, okay, and boom, their entrance starts. And it's just a song they like, I guess. Yeah. Like, yes. I work out to this song. Not good enough. Yeah. If you are on a show where you can use copywritten music, then there is no excuse. Yeah. You should be picking, if you were a baby face, if you were a hero, you should absolutely be picking a song that white people get turned to. Yeah. If you can do that, you're the half the story's already told. Yeah. Because as soon as that music hits, everyone's like, oh, what? oh yeah, here yeah. we go. Yeah. And then you come out and you're their guy. Yes. But I was actually, I have a quote here from uh, American Beetle from Kaiju Big Battle. I had to get it in Google Translate. But if you're a good guy, if you're a face, you have to make time and effort for the fans. And the greatest example I have of that is a wrestler named Brutal Bob Evans. And I've told this story a thousand times on the IndieCast podcast, and and he even uh, reiterated last time he was on. He was at a, uh, a benefit show. It was a charity show for Rex Bacchus, and he was fighting David Mercury. And it, hey, if you know who those guys are, you're like, oh, this is, this is a money match. This would be good. But... For that crowd, this was their first time meeting Bob. And so Bob knew going in, I have got to get these people up to speed before the match even starts. Because if I got to spend half the match going, I'm a good guy, by the way. We're losing precious time. So Bob's music hits. It's real twangy. It's super easy to clap to. It's very high energy. He comes through that curtain and he took, I don't know, two minutes to get to the ring. Because he beelined for the crowd. He shook every hand. He kissed every baby. He ate French fries off of old ladies' plates. He was the man of the people. So by the time he got in the ring, you would have thought this was the hundredth time he'd wrestled in front of this crowd. They were like, Brutal Bob's our guy. Yeah. He's the mayor of Port Ritchie. He's our man. Yeah. And so as soon as David Mercury came out, Everyone was already up on it, and they were like, boo this man! Yeah, yeah. Because Bob took the effort to help tell that story in advance. His trailer made it obvious from the beginning yeah. that this is your guy. Yes, connect. And yes. so then their match, so much easier to tell. Yeah. It was like, yeah. hey, everyone's brought up to speed. They know who's Godzilla. They know who's King Kong. Here we go, baby. Yeah. Just that walk to the crowd, like, uh, here's a cheat code for entrance music, like... Right now, think of your favorite entrance song. Just think of the, what's the most synonymous entrance song that comes to mind? First one. I would think the Glass Breaks from Absolutely. Pussy Boston. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm telling you that. So, you, you got to think of the formats for these songs. Right. You got the Glass Breaking. You have the Gong. You have the If You Smell. And then that portion to walk to that entrance ramp, like Ryback, let's say, where he does the Wake Up when the lyrics start playing and mm -hmm. then just that walk to connect to the audience right there. So utilize that, utilize that walk. Everything should have to mean something, you know, it wasn't by accident that John Cena spent 10 years talking to the camera guy and yeah. being like, Hey, Greg, how's the wife and kids at home? Because that's a tiny character moment to go. God, John Cena's a nice guy. Wholesome. That's what that was. He didn't by accident was like, Oh, I'm just going to break the fourth wall and talk yeah, to the cameraman one yeah. day. That was a calculated move yes. of like, Oh, if he could have come out with a sheet of freshly baked cookies, he yes. would have <laughs> like, that's what those moments are about. And so any way that you can make it easier for the audience to connect the dots and go, I got it. It does. It feel corny sometimes. Of course it does. But what are we doing? You got to make it obvious. What's the difference between a Ric Flair promo when he's a good guy and a Ric Flair promo when he's a bad guy? The only difference is he interrupts himself if he's a bad guy and insults somebody in the crowd. The only difference yeah. you can watch a thousand Ric Flair Absolutely. promos. He's still taking off the suit jacket. He's still elbow dropping a microphone. He's still almost having a heart attack yeah. in the ring. They're all the same except for the very clear indicator of, hey, by the way, I'm the bad guy tonight. Yeah. That's how you know. Yeah. you got to make it clear for your audience. As that's, much as you want to focus on, I just don't want to screw up my moves. I don't want to. That's fine. I get that. But you got to include that audience. Because if you don't, they're not going to do the work for you. Absolutely. That's And that's a key thing with characters where it's just like it can be the same style you do, just different demeanors. You exactly. Know? That's It's a very important key thing. And like I said, if there's a company where you can't use copyrighted music, then try to find something that's either 
uh, rights free or whatever that still fits with your character. I can't stress that enough. Don't just pick songs that are like, oh, this song's pretty good. No. Like it should absolutely fit with what you're doing. Yes. And in fact, I remember the greatest example is uh, Rich Swan when he was on the Indies. Oh, yes. Rich Swan used to come out to All Night Long by Lionel Richie. Yeah. I can't tell you the amount of times I've been to shows and the match was delayed because the crowd wouldn't stop singing. Like that is what you are hoping yeah. for. So that whether it's the hundredth time you've seen the wrestler or the first time you go, Oh my God, here yeah. we go. That is absolutely key. Now I want to jump back for a second and then I want you to go through and see if there's any questions so far. We're about uh, halfway through my big breakdown list. When it comes to names, Names can do a ton of lifting if that's your first time. We talked about it before we uh, cracked the mics here. There's an, a fantastic young man named uh, Broccoli Reyes, Christian Reyes. He's an, a, a fantastic wrestler, very, very skilled, and we've only got to work with him a few times. The first time I worked with him, and again, I'm blowing up a spot. I don't give a shit. The first time I worked with him, I was getting the information because I was doing ring announcing, and I was like, okay, what's your name? And he's like, oh, I'm, you know, Chris Reyes. Uh, but sometimes people call me Broccoli because he had big, poofy hair at the time. I was like, they call you broccoli? And he goes, yeah. I'm like, well, that's your name tonight. Yeah. And, he, and he looked, he I, and kudos to him, he was nervous. He was like, yeah. are you sure about this? And I was like, look, let's try broccoli tonight. And if it doesn't work, there's no law saying you got to stick with it. We can always adjust and change accordingly. But let's just give it a shot tonight and see what happens. So his match comes up. It's the first time he's in front of this crowd. They have no idea who this kid is. And when it came to his time, his music hit. And I announced him like it was the goddamn ghost of Andre the Giant. And when I came out, ladies and gentlemen, Broccoli! And he came through that curtain and that you would have thought it was all friends and family in that crowd. They lost their minds because what the hell? This kid's named Broccoli. And got huge chance throughout his match. No. Like just that kind of high energy and having an interesting name that stuck did so much heavy lifting. Yeah. And he a, matched it too. Cause the of tights course. were green and of stuff course. like everything match. It wasn't like, Oh, here's broccoli. And he's just wearing like, and it's boots. Brock Lesnar. And it's yeah. like, well, you know, <laughs> like we shorts and boots, you know, he, yes. it met, everything matched.